Hi everyone. In today's video, I am going to be talking about uh, the lashing equipment that is used on container ships to ensure the safe stowage and carriage of cargo. Uh, in that regard, I will show you a lot of pictures that will help you to understand the lashing system used on board container ships. And this video will be very useful uh, for especially the mariners who have uh, never sailed on container ships. Now, what makes this video special is, of course, you can uh, go and look at pictures or you can read about container operations from any book. But uh, I have mostly in my life sailed on container ships. So I like to believe I know a lot about container ships. And I'm not an expert, but I, I would like to believe that I know a lot about container ships. I would like to give you guys some extra knowledge if I can with every slide, because if I can't teach you about container ships, then shame on me. I should quit making these videos. All right. So let's get started. So what we're going to talk about initially is, of course, uh, use of lashing bars. Now, these are called lashing bars and you have uh, small lashing bars as well as much longer lashing bars. So you see that figure one is a lashing bar that is used for second tier container. Uh, so those are the shorter lashing bars. And then figure two that you can see are much longer lashing bars. Now don't get confused when you look at figure two. It's not two separate bars there. It's actually a single bar. It's just trying to show you the length. It's trying to show you how uh, much longer it is with respect to the shorter lashing bar. So the longer lashing bar is used to lash the third high container. So when we say third high, that would mean if there are three containers, it's used to lash the third container from the bottom. And the shorter lashing bars are used to lash the second container from the bottom. Uh, I will show you pictures on how it all looks and what happens with the bottommost container. Because on container ships, you can only load up or rather lash uh, three containers only. And the rest of containers are pretty much dependent on the twist lock system. And we'll talk about that as we go along. So these are the first uh, equipment I want to talk about. These are called lashing bars. Now, um, this is how a lashing bar looks like. So you can see how this is one end of the lashing bar that goes into the slot of the container. Uh, and uh, that is that goes into the slot of the container. And the other end of the lashing bar is uh, tied to a turnbuckle to the ship structure. So that is how it ties together the lashing. You can also see a kind of a rod protruding from underneath the container. And that is the rod of a twist lock. That is a locking mechanism of a twist lock. And we'll talk about twist locks as we go along. All right, but I just thought I'll show you a zoomed in picture for you to better understand how the locking mechanism or the lashing mechanism of the container ship works. Uh, these are how the lashing bars are stored. Most of these lashing bars are stored uh, near every hatch cover uh, where the containers are loaded on deck. So that is how they are loaded. So if they are not in use, they are stored close to the hatch cover uh, because then it is easier for the stow, uh, not the stowaways, but the stewards rather. And uh, also if the ship staff is involved in lashing, then it's easier for them to just use it from a place which is closer to the hatch cover. And then when it is not in use, uh, they put it back into the slots here. So you can see these are the longer lashing bars. These are not the shorter lashing bars. These are the longer lashing bars which are used to lash the third high container. If you go towards the uh, extreme end of the picture, you can see there are some turnbuckles there. Uh, I have not been able to get a, a close up look of the turnbuckle, but those are the turnbuckles. So the turnbuckles, of course, one end goes into the lashing bar and the other end is shackled onto the ship structure. So that pretty much connects the container to the ship structure. And that is how the lashing mechanism works when it comes to lashing bars and turnbuckles. All right. So that is one way of one mechanism. These are, of course, the new type of lashing bars that have come in these days. These are called the hinge type of lashing bars. And uh, these lashing bars, of course, uh, they are uh, slightly lighter. I will not say lighter. I mean, uh, comparatively lighter. If you pick them up, you will not find them lighter, but comparatively lighter. And they have a better locking mechanism. This is one this is the other end of the lashing bar you can see this hook actually goes into the hook goes into the uh, container slot the bottom container slots and the circular end the circular end the the other side which is not a circular but it's like an oval shape it's open end uh, that is uh, what connects uh, to the turnbuckle and that is where the turnbuckle hook goes in and the turnbuckle is then lashed to the ship structure then we have something called the twist locks. Now the twist locks are of course used to uh, pretty much lock all the containers 
Uh, and uh, this is pretty much the only lashing that uh, containers above the third tier are depending on. So you, we basically place the twist locks. The, so the bottommost container, the twist locks are placed onto the ship sockets. There are sockets available. So you place the containers there and then the bottommost container goes in there. And then every tier, of course, the twist locks are there. They're an, they are an additional locking mechanism. Uh, so th there are some kind of locking twist locks here. And what you see on the your, uh, left side are also different kind of, they are called stacking cones. The, many people say they are twist locks. They are not twist locks actually, they are stacking cones. And these stacking cones are normally used for under the hold cargo. They are used for under the deck containers. You don't have twist locks in under the deck because it's hard to lock twist locks. So you use stacking cones for under the deck containers. Uh, don't call it twist locks because people do that. It's not right. On the right side is what you have is twist locks because these, twi these twist locks have to be locked. Some of them are locked uh, uh, when you turn them on the right or some of them are left locking. So we call them right locking and left locking twist locks. So these twist locks go into every tier and you have to keep on locking them once the container is loaded on top of these twist locks. And above the third high container, all twist, all containers are pretty much holding on uh, based on the twist lock. So they are very integral part of the lashing equipment and you have to make sure that they are locked. So as they go higher and higher, higher, they have to be locked. Some can be locked from the ship structure, right? Standing on the hatch coming, while some have to be locked from the top uh, when the gantry crane puts it. There are stevedores who come with the gantry crane and they lock it. But you have to make sure that all these twist locks are locked because uh, often cargo has been lost on ships because the twist locks have not been locked. The ship's officers have not checked if the twist locks have been locked or not. The stevedores have not done a good job. So you have to make sure that these twist locks are locked. And also you have to make sure you find out uh, whether your twist locks are left locking or right locking because they could be different. You cannot assume that all of them are of the same type. So when you join a ship as an officer, you must find out whether they lock left and right. And some ships actually, you know, they mix uh, twist locks. Some of them become left lock and right locking. That's not a good thing to uh, have on the ship. So I strongly uh, recommend that uh, you should have only one type of twist locks on, on the vessel. Uh, sometimes a wrong type of twist lock is supplied to the vessel and that can be very dangerous because then the stevedores also get confused. The ship officers also are confused. They don't know which one is locked and which one is unlocked. So have only one type of locking uh, twist locks on the ship. Either they should be left locking or right locking. So you know what I mean by left locking, right locking depends on where the lever of the twist lock is turning here. So you can see here on the picture, this twist lock is locked when it is on the left side. So the handle, the lever of the twist lock is on the left side and that is where you can see the locking position of the twist lock is. Uh, if I put it on the right side, the top, the top triangular shape will become aligned longitudinally with the fore and left aft line of the twist lock. So that's how it works. So when it is in this position, it is pretty much locked. Uh, otherwise it can be unlocked. All right, so that's enough about twist locks. Um, now we talk about a little bit about container handling equipment. So you can see here, the all ISO containers, they actually have top and bottom corner fittings and they are designed to accept lifting attachments. Now some containers also have fork pockets for lifting by forklift truck. Now container operators actually prefer the container to remain in the trailer while it is being packed or unpacked. However, there are occasions, example, the unloading or loading of heavy or awkward machinery where it is uh, suitable or more desirable to dismount the container and then load the uh, you know, heavy or awkward machinery and then put it back on the truck. So to do that, of course, we have different kind of equipment. So you have, uh, you know, power jacks. Now there are cranes. Now in the previous slide, you saw there were cranes there. Now those cranes form part of the establishment of an installation. And the cranes, are, they are excellent and economical means of handling the container, providing the, provided that the lifting attachments are suitable. Now, um, these are, of course, power jacks. You know what power jacks are? So power jacks is basically four jacks uh, fit into the bottom corner casting of the container and they are controlled from a console. So they lift and lower individually or in unison by selection and they are either electrohydraulic or electromechanical. Now manually operated versions are also available of course. Then you have the overhead traveling cranes. Now these overhead traveling cranes uh, they are rail mounted or they are mounted rather on an elevated trackway. Now they straddle the container mounting or dismounting and storage areas and they have the possible disadvantage of operating only over a fixed path so you cannot of course shift them around containers have to be bought into this place here for the crane to operate and it's not a movable crane it's a fixed kind of a crane so you can't take it much anywhere else 
Now, there are variety of types, but uh, all have a horizontal boom, uh, which reaches across the width of the ship being worked. And some have the ability to transport 140 feet or 220 feet containers at the same time. Then you have, of course, the mobile gantry cranes, and they, they you know, they are electrohydraulic operated with self-adjusting ramps to ensure even lifting of the container. Now, out of balance loads are compensated by chain sling adjusters. Now, there are two types: one manually propelled, and the other is propelled by diesel, which can be driven and positioned by the operator. The manually propelled version, when unloaded, can be maneuvered and lowered as well. Now, these equipments are very suitable for handling containers when necessary at the shipper's premises. They are comparatively cheaper. Uh, port terminal, container bases, depots, freight stations, they have very large throughputs of containers. Large volume of containers have to be handled. They have to be transferred. So costly equipments have to be designed to deal with such outputs. So in that regard, you have the straddle carriers. Now, straddle carriers, there are variety of designs are there, but essentially they consist of a powered mobile portal frame and four wheel steering. So they lift, stack and transfer containers and they are quite speedy. They are quite fast. They are quite flexible. And these are called straddle uh, then you have the trailer mounted equipment. Now they are basically hydraulically powered arms which swing the container from the trailer and place it on the ground and stack it up to at least too high. Uh, can't go more than too high because it cannot reach more than too high. But these guys can uh, or the other these type of carriers, the straddle carriers, they can load containers up to too high. Then you have the trans -tainers. Now these trans -tainers are either rub rubber wheeled or rail mounted. Now the you know, one of these that you see on your screens here, they are these actually portal frame service road vehicles within the area bounded by their own tracks. And a proportion of the potential container stacking area is thus required for service roads. So they are not uh, very uh, flexible in terms of operations, but uh, you know, you have a cantilever, which is essentially a portal design with an extension on one or both sides, which allows vehicles to be serviced away from the stack. So the advantage of these type of trans trainers is they consist of uh, optimum use of stack heights and uh, low downtime records. The disadvantage is, of course, they are not flexible, you know, they are and they considerably they reduce the uh, volume of operation, the throughput in operating conditions. They are not very fast, but they can handle a lot of volume, but they are not very fast and of course not very flexible either. So makes it uh, difficult to, uh, you know, uh, move them around or handle uh, containers very fast. So eventually I will end this video here now, but uh, this is a better picture of you can see how the turnbuckles are being used with the lashing bars and you can see how the shorter lashing bars are being used for the second high containers. Uh, in my next video where I talk about the lashing of containers on deck or rather I talk about the storage of containers as well. I will uh, show you some more pictures. Now you can see here that in the lashing arrangement in every case the same lashing pattern same lashing pattern is being used. Now you can see the positioning cones of the first layer of containers stored on deck should be fixed with their locking pins. So when I say positioning cones, so they are you know basically the stacking cones, and then or you can have twist locks on deck, but under the deck you always have stacking cones or positioning cones rather. All right, the steel lashing bars that you can see they are used by a diagonal lashing method, so they are diagonal uh, for second high containers, and also the long aluminium lashing rods is used diagonal lashing method for third high containers. Now here, of course, you can't see the third high or rather the third tier containers, but uh, this picture, I put up this picture basically to show you the arrangement of the turn buckle as well with the lashing bar. So it's not only the lashing bar, but the one end of the lashing bar goes into the container slot and the other goes into a turn buckle, which is then fixed onto the ship structure. Now, of course, uh, these uh, lashing rods can be used for the lashing of 20 foot containers or 40 foot containers or even 45 feet containers. Um, I'll show you not 45, but 40 feet and 20 feet containers. Uh, 45 feet containers are a bit different. I'll talk about it in my next video. So 20 feet and 40 feet containers, uh, you can use it, uh, but you can use it to lash uh, 8 feet high containers or rather 8 feet 6 inches high containers as well that you can use. So those are called high cube containers, which are 8 feet and 6 inches high. So you can use these lashing bars to load those as well. All right. So the number of container lashing equipment supplied to vessels should have 100% uh, on full load condition with about 10% available for spares. So you sh if, if although the vessel not necessarily loads 100% of the containers, but uh, based on the capacity or the volume of space available, 
but the lashing equipment available on your ships so that is why especially on container ships it's very important for you to take the inventory of the lashing equipment how many lashing bars and turn buckles and twist locks are available and you have to take that inventory and you have to keep an account of it because some of them get damaged some of them get lost some of them get uh, you know uh, cannot be used so that's why and they have to be maintained in good condition especially the turn buckles have to be greased regularly they have to be greased otherwise they get jammed and you cannot use it so um, based on the uh, container slots available on the ship the maximum number of container slots you have to have lashing equipment assuming that uh, the whole ship if filled with containers uh, it should be able to lash it although it's not done and then you must have 10 percent extra as a spare just to ensure that if there are any damaged ones or some ones that you can't use or they are jammed then you can provide the spare ones uh, to cover for the lashing equipment all right so i think i will finish this video here i don't like to make my videos very long uh, although they become a bit long sometimes but uh, yes i'll finish the video here and i will put up another video where i'll explain to you uh, no, about the storage of containers how the containers are stored and i'll show you some more pictures about lashing there as well i'll show you some pictures about third high container lashing as well all right with uh, but i'll keep going i think there are some more uh, slides here sorry sorry i'm a bit confused here so there of course here here the slides are because uh, yeah i remember putting them here on this powerpoint here so you can see here how the third high lashing containers are done the third tier we call it third high but it's called third tier as well so you can see how the longer lashing bars are being used for the third high container the third tier container and again they are used diagonally uh, then turn buckles are used to attach them to the ship structure and you have the eye plating for the turn buckle so you can see there are eye plates you call them eye plates because the turn buckle one end of the turn buckle is fixed to the ship structure using the eye plate there and uh, i'll show you some more pictures and this is what it looks like so on the container lashing plan on your ship so every container ship has a lashing plan so the lashing plan will have pictures like this so you can see that uh, on some ships you have cross lashing most of the ship, all the ships will have cross lashing of course but in some ships you have parallel lashing and some ships you have double parallel lashing so double parallel lashing is you can see even the first high the first tier of the container is also lashed to the ship structure i have sailed on few ships like that it's not normally the practice but yes many ships use that otherwise normal practice is parallel lashing where the second high and the third high container is lashed to the ship structure and the first tier container is pretty much based on the twist lock but you can see the double parallel lashing even the first high container is lashed and that is to counteract for the forces that a ship particular type of ship may be facing or the type of trade uh, the areas the sea areas that the ship may be going to that is the reason and uh, of course then uh, you can see this is more in reality how it looks on the ship you can see how the third high containers now of course this ship has only three high containers but if any container is loaded more than the third high container then of course that con those containers are pretty much locked in by the twist lock only those lashing bars cannot reach the containers from fourth high and fifth and sixth these are these days of course uh, containers are lo lo loaded up to eight nine ten high of uh, bigger ships have loading containers um, 10 high 12 high as well so that is the implication of it all right and finally this picture here you can see uh, this is what i was talking about earlier you can see some of the containers are jutting out those containers are actually 45 feet containers and uh, 45 feet containers do not sit exactly on 40 feet containers because they are much longer so they jut out so sometimes you cannot put lashing bars there although they have slots available for lashing bars which is uh, in line with the 40 feet containers but sometimes containers don't have lashing bars then they're pretty much locked in by the twist lock system but here you can see that the 45 feet containers also have slots available for lashing and you can see how the lashing bars are going into the 45 feet container slots although although they are jutting out they are longitudinally not aligned with the 40 feet containers but you can see how the parallel lashing has been done or rather the double parallel lashing has been done where the first high container is also locked using the lashing bar and so is the uh, second high container which are 45 feet containers so yes i had the pictures on the slides i just got confused whether i am going to talk about this in this presentation or in the next presentation so i hope you guys learned something about uh, container lashing equipment i've talked about different types of containers in separate videos i've talked about container ships before but i thought i'll show you the lashing arrangement because sometimes students are being asked about lashing arrangements on container ships especially if they have not sailed on container ships because the surveyors know that the students will not be aware 
of the lashing arrangements and they want you to be able to talk about it as if you have experienced it and you have a good knowledge about it all right so i will stop the video here guys and uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, if you want to know something further from me about container ships in my next video i will talk about the explanation of the storage plan i will explain the storage plan to you how a cargo uh, plan or the storage plan on container ships is designed and if you see it uh, how to recognize the containers and how are containers stored on the ships and how are they assigned positions so we'll talk about that as well all right so stop the video here good luck with your studies guys and uh, reach out if you need any advice or any help and uh, i look forward to your feedback comments likes shares uh, good luck guys bye for now